Welcome everyone to another Photoshop tutorial. As I said on my previous video, I'll show you how I made this manipulation. Uh, I would say this is um, maybe an advanced tutorial. Uh, I'll use the um, uh, the usual techniques, maybe some something new here. Um, I'll show you how I made this broken wing and well, some of the effects that I um, that I uh, used to get to this uh, look here that you can see here, all the effects and everything to get to this color tone and to this um, general look here. And now a quick message from my new sponsor Squarespace and we will get started. This new tutorial is brought to you by my new sponsor Squarespace, the all-in-one platform that makes it fast and easy to create your own professional website, online portfolio or even e-commerce websites. And for a free trial and 10% off your first purchase, go to squarespace.com and use the offer code PSDBOX. Uh, remember, 10% off on your first purchase using the code PSDBOX on squarespace.com. Um, okay, so some some of the images uh, used for this tutorial are from Deviant Art, and some of them are from Deposit Photos. But uh, as you uh, may know, I will give you a smaller resolution uh, for the images that uh, are from Deposit Photos, so you don't have to buy them. But uh, as I said, it's a smaller size; it's not the original size of the image. Uh, also, if you're a premium member, you'll be able to download this uh, PSD file. Uh, the resources on the original size and also uh, this video if you want to and uh, what I will do um, is select the entire canvas first and go to edit copy and create a new document with control command and because that way uh, the values the original values of this canvas size uh, will be copied automatically here so I don't have to put them manually uh, you can see that the original size of this PSD file is 5000 pixels but um, the the size that you will download as a premium member, in case you you want to download this, will be smaller because this PSD file is almost uh, 700 megabytes, which is uh, which is a lot of uh, space. So I will decrease the size of the PSD file to maybe to maybe half of uh, maybe the same size that I will use for the tutorial, which is um, uh, 2,500 pixels. Um, let's. Uh, um, go here and type two uh, 200, 500 pixels. So this is the canvas that I will use for this tutorial, and maybe this is will be the this will be the size of this uh, PSD file as well. Um, okay, so the first thing I want to do is start with the background as I usually do, and I use two images for the background. This is the first one, and this is the second one. So I'll start with the background image. And Control A, Control C, Control W. I uh, I work with the uh, keyboard shortcuts. Mm, many of you already know that. And I will I will go a bit quick here because this is a um, standard um, manipulation procedures. Let's call them. Uh, just copy paste images. Uh, that's why I said it's a bit more advanced. Not because the techniques are more advanced, but because I will not explain everything in as much detail. At least at least not the the usual process and the next thing I will do is open the other one which is this one let's copy it and paste it here let's name this BG2 and this one BG1 the reason why I named the layers is because uh, if you want to ask something about a particular layer or something uh, it's better to uh, it's better for me to identify which layer you're talking about so uh, if you make uh, questions about a particular layer on the layers palette please use the names that I use here so that way I can that way I know what you're talking about okay let's leave that here the links for the images are on the video description or on and there's a link there that will take you to my website and there you'll, fi you'll find the links to the stock images and uh, well let's uh, hide the BG uh, for now and let's open the woman. As I said, I um, I have the 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 dragon and the woman already extracted because I will not spend time showing you how to extract this. The dragon is already in a, in PNG format, I think. I'm not really sure. Um, 
so you don't have to extract it but the woman is over a white background is not complicated at all you can use the quick selection tool or other tools i use the pen tool i already, I already have tutorials about how to extract uh, objects from the background so this is the woman that i will use i'll copy it and paste her right here on top and let's name this woman of course I'll have to make it smaller but I want to convert this into a smart object just in case I want to change the size after I add the dragon um, I'll actually take a look at the original and see more or less the size from the bottom to the top uh, I think it's okay maybe it's smaller okay so we have uh, the main elements here now one problem that we will have here is if you take a look at the woman you can see that her feet are out of focus and our background here is uh, in focus so we need to add a great um, a Gaussian blur to the background to make to make it fit the blur on her feet so the way I did that is I converted the BG1 into a well you we can convert it into a smart object well, actually, you, if you can do this, do it uh, this way. If you cannot do it, um, you'll have to create a duplicate and add the, grid, the the Gaussian blur to the to the copy and then mask it. But uh, since we have smart objects, let's use that. And now let's zoom at 100% so we can see uh, to see the actual size and go to with the BG1 selected and converted into a smart object. I'll go to filter, blur, and choose. Um, Gaussian blur and now we'll have to choose a radius that matches the same amount of blur as on her feet and I think for this canvas size I think about 1.4 1.5 pixels is okay um, let's leave it like that for a more realistic um, for a more realistic effect we should also add uh, some Gaussian blur to the woman because the edges here are too sharp okay so if it's out of focus we all we also need to make the edges out of focus and since I already have the woman as a smart object I can do that but first I want to uh, finish what I started here on the BG1 so when you add a smart filter when when you add this filter to a smart object it becomes a smart filter and you can see it here and you can also you also have the layer mask for this smart filter and that's the reason why I used smart object because now I can get I can get the gradient tool and select black to white click OK and now with this layer mask selected for the smart filter I can click here and drag up uh, and first I need to select the linear type and reverse it uh, I don't know if you can see it I want to make a really Okay, see that when you do this uh, you start to remove the effect uh, with this layer mask so what I want to do is leave the bottom part uh, I want to leave this part out of focus and then this one in focus so what I will do is draw a gradient from here from where her feet start here to about here and that way we have a uh, uh, smooth transition between the out of focus area and the in focus area as you can see here when I disable the layer mask okay so now it looks a bit more realistic but as I said let's do the same here with the woman I can press Control command F that will apply the last filter which was the Gaussian blur and since this is a smart object it will uh, this um, window will pop up and the radius I'll put it to about 1.3 or 1.2 click OK and the same thing we can do here with the gradient tool um, but this time uh, the gradient will need to start maybe here and end right here because we want uh, the bottom part of her body to be in focus so maybe I'll start here and end there but it's too much Gaussian so uh, it's too much blur so let's leave it at about 0 0.8 okay but we also need to remove the blur from from the inside of the feet we only need the blur uh, because we want to blur the edges so I'll get the brush tool select this layer mask and I'll use a soft brush 
opacity and flow to 100%. Oops. Um, I change the the opacity and the flow using the keyboard. Uh, you can do that most just by typing on the keyboard. Uh, let's decrease the hardness. Uh, if you type the number when you have the brush selected, it all it automatically changes that you don't have to do it manually. And if you want to change the flow, you press the shift key and then you type the number. So it's as easy as that. So uh, if I deactivate this smart filter, you can see the effect now. We just blurred a bit um, this edge is here. Uh, anyways, part of the feed will be covered by the dragon's tail. If I, yep, see that? So. If you want to skip this step, you can do it. But uh, maybe in other artworks, you, you'll find this useful. So uh, I just wanted to match the blur amount on the background and on her feet as well. Now let's uh, re-enable the background to image. And I'll hide the woman for now because I want to mask this uh, BG2 layer. Uh, I'll create the layer mask for it and get the gradient tool again. But this time I'll use the reflected gradient uh, and I'll zoom out a bit because I only need this mountains part. So what I will do is maybe start the gradient here and do something like that. I don't really like any of the bigger gradient. Yep, something like that it looks a bit better. But now I can see these other mountains, which is not what I want. So I'll probably get the brush tool, use a big soft brush. And with the opacity at about 50%, I'll paint this bottom part of the mountains with white. That looks nice. And I'll shift the color to black because I want to remove part of the bottom part here. Okay, now I think it looks, I think we got a good blend here. Okay, see that? And because these clouds have pretty much the same color. Uh, you can uh, you can see how well they blend. Okay, let's reactivate the woman layer, and let's make some adjustments to her uh, to her layer here. So uh, what I wanted to do is add some uh, shadow here, but I will do that if I remember if I remember that after I add the dragon because we will have the tail here, and I want to make the shadow of the tail over her body here, but. We'll do, we'll do that a bit later on. Uh, let's add a hue saturation adjustment as a clipping mask because we only want to affect her and not the rest of the layers. So I'll create the clipping mask by right clicking on it. And I'll decrease the saturation to minus 46. And we will add a curves adjustment now. Also as clipping mask. You can also do that if you press and hold the Alt key. And when you put the mouse between the two layers, you can see how it changes and when you click you create the clipping mask, it's a lot uh, faster. And also you can click this uh, icon here when you add an adjustment layer, you can see it has this icon here. When you click it, it clips it to the layer. So now we only affect the woman layer. And now I want to add two points here to make her darker. But I want to keep part of the highlights there. So uh, I think something like this is okay. Okay, try to get a similar shape to this. And or you can copy the, the, the input and output uh, values of each point. So you can see the values here. You can use uh, the same ones if you want to. These are all the adjustments that I use for the woman now. But I want to keep editing the background because the woman is uh, too bright, so to say, compared to the background. And I wanted to use something a bit uh, brighter on the background itself. So uh, on top of the two background layers, BG1 and BG2, we will add a gradient map. So I'll leave it to black and white, that's okay. And I'll change the blend mode of this to screen. And you can see how they will become brighter. And I'll decrease the opacity to 50% because that was too bright. Okay, so see how it looks now. And another thing that I did is I created sort of a mist um, there on the distance. I created a new layer and then I got the gradient tool and I want to use the uh, background to transparent and I'll have to change the color here to white and when you switch this the colors here to white this one changes as well so I'll select this one white 
too transparent and use the reflected gradient again and now uh, click here uh, where these mountains are press and hold the shift key because we want to create a straight a horizontal um, gradient and we want it to be perfectly straight so click and drag to about here and let go and we have to reverse this because we want black white to transparent not transparent to white okay something like that but I want it a bit higher up about here and about that big okay so this is how uh, how it looks I want to drop the opacity a bit or maybe do it again I want to make it a bit bigger so I'll do it again yeah something like that because I want it to I want it to look soft see that that's how I want it to look but I want to decrease the opacity let's say to about 80 percent so I want to see some of the of the background there let's add now the dragon and this is the file as I said you have the link this is from Debian art if you don't find the same one well you can use you can use another one there are tons of dragons on Debian art so you can use them and we want to put this uh, below the woman but above this layer which I'll call mist and press ctrl command V to paste it let's name this layer dragon and I have to make it smaller of course so I press ctrl command T lock the aspect ratio here on top and let's see maybe 50% that's a bit too big so I'll make it smaller pressing and holding the shift key to preserve the the aspect ratio but since I already have it locked here uh, the aspect ratio will be preserved automatically without, without having to press the shift key uh, I think I will leave it right here let me take a look at the original yeah I need to make it a bit smaller oops we we'll have to do it again 50% and smaller I want this curved part here to be over her feet here okay so as I said we will cover part of her feet with the dragon's tail I want to make it just a bit bigger about that big and let's leave it there if you're not sure about the size uh, do what I did here with the woman convert it into a smart object and actually I'll do that because uh, that way you don't lose quality if you want to make it bigger again so let's put it at 48% and a bit smaller 46 okay okay now have uh, both the dragon and the woman here but uh, we need to mask part of the woman's feet uh, to make to make it look like uh, the tail is in front of the feet of her feet okay so what I will do is load the dragon selection by pressing and holding the control key and clicking on the thumbnail that will load as you can see the the edges the, the selection and now I'll select the woman layer uh, I should have created the layer mask uh, before making the selection but anyway I'll now click with the selection active I'll click the layer mask icon and you can see how uh, it masks uh, part of the part of it but what I will do is uh, fill the selection with white so create the layer mask before you load the selection so I'll do this again I'll now press uh, control and click there and now I'll select the, the brush tool and select the layer mask that you created which it should which should be white and now paint with black I want to make sure that my opacity and flow are to 100% now I'll paint with black here and it will only paint the selected area even though I paint I can paint right here on the bottom nothing will happen because I have this selection which uh, restricts my area here so I can only paint the selected area and see how it looks now okay uh, let's move on and we need to make some adjustments to the dragon uh, it has this um, cyan tone here which I don't really like so I'll select the dragon layer and use I think I used the hue saturation let me take a look yeah and uh, hue saturation 
and I'll clip it to the dragon layer and I'll select, I'll make a selective adjustment here uh, so instead of using the master I'll use the cyan's and you can see how it creates this selection here but I'll have to expand it just a bit like so, maybe it's too much and now what I will do is decrease the saturation to about minus 70 or something like that Okay, and uh, I don't know if you can notice it, but uh, the body of the dragon now is uh, It's more of a gray tone. Let me show you the before and after see that and here on the tail as well and here on the neck and on the eyes See that it was like uh, I don't know. I didn't like really this changes in color here. I didn't like how they looked so I Suppressed them by decreasing the saturation of those tones Okay now we need to make the eyes of the dragon stand out a bit, so now that we are working with it, I want to keep everything um, here uh, close to the dragon, so I'll create a new layer um, and it will automatically be clipped to the to the dragon layer and I'll name this eye. Uh, I could have placed it um, here, but uh, as I said, I want to keep it um, everything here as a pack, so to say. I'll select the brush tool and get a brown, a dark blue color. I'll zoom in and use a smaller brush and the hardness uh, to about 50 or something like that, 65, doesn't really matter. Just uh, paint the eye like that. And now I'll change the blend mode of this to color dodge. You can see how uh, what it happens, it makes the eye stand out a lot more. Okay, and if you're not happy with this color, you can press Control Command U to load the hue saturation um, with the eye layer selected, of course. And you can increase the saturation, you can change the tone, and you can see how the eye changes there. And you can make it darker uh, or brighter. But if you make it too bright, uh, you will burn the highlights there, which is not what we want. So I'll increase the saturation, maybe use, uh, let's see what tone we can use. This cyan green tone, I like how it looks. Okay, so let me show you the with uh, with and without this uh, painted layer here. That's uh, how the eye stands out a, a little more there. Okay, let's move on and add the wings uh, on the woman. Uh, what I will do is select the, all the layers of the dragon, uh, the eyes and everything, and I'll actually put them in a group because it looks better and name this dragon and hide this for a second. And we need to now open the wings layer and uh, make the wings for this uh, for this angel. So let's open our wing stock image. This is painted. This is a painted wing so uh, you can see the link the darkest hour um, this is the author that made this uh, wing it's awesome I really like it I'll give you the link uh, to this uh, user on DeviantArt and uh, you'll you'll find there a lot of other wings if you want to use them uh, I'll use this one so I'll copy it and I will not save it and paste it right here. You can see it's bigger for, uh, in my case here but uh, I'll make it smaller. Let's try 50% maybe a bit smaller. 40 or something like that. And let's place it there. Of course we need to place this below the woman layer so let's name this right wing. And I'll move it a bit about there and I'll duplicate it with control command J flip it horizontally and put it here uh, what I want to do is uh, rotate it just a bit and maybe change the position a bit higher up um, maybe rotate it the other way because you can see her shoulder is a bit up here and also because I don't want to make it look obviously you can you can tell it's the same wing duplicated but it's not really that obvious if you um, move it a bit so <clears throat> and also it looks a bit more realistic if you do that um, I'll flip this just a bit on the other side 
press enter and we need to make this look like a broken wing and for that we need to use a part of bone and for that I used this deposit photos image of the skeleton and let's see if we have the path here we don't have it so what we will do is use the quick selection tool and select this part of the bone and this whole part here well actually it's a lot easier if, if we use it the other way if you use the magic wand and select the black parts deactivate contiguous and do it that way with the shift key I want to include this part on the selection and now I'll use the refine edge uh, well first I want to create the layer mask invert it and you can see that with the magic wand to get really awful edges here so what I want to do is right click and choose refine mask and I want to change this to the color here let's see where that is right here on white because I want to see those I want to eliminate this black edges so what I will do is shift the edge a bit like that increase the smooth the feather as well well the smooth let's leave it how it was to zero increase the feather to about one pixel and now increase the contrast and you can see how those edges are now gone um, and let's leave this here on layer mask and click OK so it was quite easy and quick to remove that let's apply the layer mask and we only need this part of the of the arm so what I will do is get the polygonal lasso tool and do this and press Control command C to copy this part and go back to my document here and uh, I'll paste this here above the two wings go back here close it with Control W and I'll name this bone and this is actually yeah that was my I named it incorrectly here this is the right wing and this is the left wing okay and now let's uh, let's see what we can do with this bone uh, I'll hide it for a second because first I want to destroy this uh, wing so let me take a look at the original uh, okay uh, I want to destroy this uh, this part here so this part of the wing will be gone so for the left wing we need to create a layer mask and select the brush pressing the B key on the keyboard and we need to select one of these brushes here uh, they will look a bit better so well actually first we need we can use a normal brush a normal hard brush to do something like this okay and then select another brush uh, as I said uh, one of these brushes here uh, will work better and just uh, paint like that I want to zoom in I would probably deactivate the gradient map so I can see a bit better and let's choose another brush and just need to we need to destroy this a bit make it look like it's ripped or something like that do the best you can here on the edges get this effect and you can also change try different brushes to, for different parts of the of the edge uh, try maybe tomorrow if you want okay uh, let me try this other one as well um, be careful because some brushes have a weird settings here like color dynamics transfer do a brush and stuff like that and they will not work well so if you see um, strange behavior of the brush uh, open the brush and take a look at the settings here and deactivate anything if you need to. If you have brushes of uh, broken stuff like, I don't know, uh, broken paper or I don't know, things like that, you can use those. Uh, I don't want to have a straight line here, that's why I'm doing random destructions here. Uh, I don't know, maybe something like that. It doesn't look really bad really nice here so I'll repaint that part um, 
I don't know, let me take a look at the original. Okay. Uh, one other thing you can do, uh, I actually I'll delete the whole part here, is keep uh, part of these wings here. Make it the brush smaller and keep part of those wings there. Of those feathers, sorry. Um, stuff like that. And now with this bigger brush, with the actual size of the brush, rip the edges apart. See that? So, um, sometimes it's difficult to get a realistic result here, so um, try your best, as I said. We will enhance the effect with some uh, falling uh, feathers later on, but uh, try to get a good result here as well. Okay, this is the part of the wing. Uh, maybe I deleted too much, uh, we'll see, but anyways. Uh, now I'll re-enable the layer uh, of the bone here. And we need to make it smaller first. Something like that. And I want to flip it horizontally and flip it around like that and I want to make it smaller now <coughs> I want to leave it there and put it below the two wings there and this is how it looks uh, maybe I don't know maybe do something like that and maybe looks better like that and I'll use a layer mask I'll create a layer mask for the bone and I want to delete this part I don't want it to be visible but we also need to uh, rip this bone uh, this part of the bone as well so first delete this part as you can see what I'm doing here uh, like that and then you can use the polygonal lasso tool to make a sort of a well I shall use the free the lasso tool and uh, make some uh, something like this and fill the selection with black I'm working on the layers uh, on the layer mask okay so I'm trying to um, instead of using the instead of using the brush I'm trying to create uh, the crack effect or something like that here on the bone manually using the lasso tool and you get uh, this sort of effect and when you take a look at 100% it looks a bit better, but I want to I want to have a more visible effect like that. Okay, so we have the bone now. Um, maybe it would be a good idea to put the missing part of the wing here, but uh, I didn't want to do it, so I left it like like you see here. Um, the next thing I did, I'll reactivate the dragon uh, layer, and you can see it doesn't really look nice because the dragon is right there. Uh, behind this uh, and I don't want I don't like that so I want to move it around a bit uh, that will affect my layer mask here but uh, I'll remake it so I'll probably leave it like this okay so I'll now go to the woman layer and this layer mask I'll fill it back with white and repeat the process here uh, load the dragon selection right here pressing control and clicking on the thumbnail and now I'll fill this uh, well actually I don't want to fill it I want to paint with the brush with the normal hard brush and paint with white with the black to hide this part of, of her feet great now we have it here um, let's re-enable the eye of the dragon because it moved I should have linked it I don't even know where it is, right there. Let's move it with the V key and put it there where it was. Okay. And what else? Now we need to make some blood effects um, over the woman's uh, skin on the broken wing and here on the floor. And for that I use uh, more stock images. Uh, for example this one for the tears. Um, let me zoom in. 
So I used this part uh, of blood. Uh, this image is from uh, from Deviant Art, and it's it's easy to find it if you preserve the original name of the file because you can see uh, the name of the author here. And even if you Google this, you can find it. If you if you uh, use the same name here that you see here, you'll you most of the times you'll find it. Uh, but as I said, I'll give the links to the to the author's account so you can uh, search their gallery and download this. So I'll copy this part of the photo, go back to my to my document here and I want to paste this on top of everything so I'll press Control command V and you can see it's too big so I want to make it smaller first and I'll put this on I don't know maybe on this part of the face uh, so I'll, f I'll have to flip it but but first I want to make it smaller like so now I'll flip it horizontally like so and make it smaller and now we need to try and find a good blend mode that will work for this. Um, even smaller, like that. And we need to create a layer mask. But first, I want to make, I want to try some blend modes here. See which one work. Well, actually, I'll try to blend this using the 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 brush tool. Well, let's try the multiply blend mode and make it brighter. So I'll load the um, the levels and try to use the midtones. Okay, something like that. So I, as you can see, the the multiply blend mode works, and uh, the rest of the edge will blend it with with the layer mask and the soft brush and painting with black to hide. I want to decrease the opacity to about fifty percent on the brush. Okay and just paint with this soft brush on the edges here. You can see the blend is quite realistic. Now part of the blood is too bright so I, maybe I have to open the levels again and maybe make the, the mid-tones a bit darker again. Okay so now you can see it looks pretty nice. I, I, I think it looks nice and let's try and find maybe we can use this other part of blood for the other eye. Let's, let's see if it works. So I'll name this tier 1. I'll paste this here and I'll name it tier 2. Make it smaller. Zoom in and flip it horizontally. And place it right there. <coughs> yeah, it looks nice, I think like so and let's try the multiply blend mode again and use the levels again uh, you can also try soft light but I don't know if in this case will work no it's not working too nice so uh, darken well darken is looking good on the brighter parts of the image but I'll stick with the multiply and use the levels and now create a layer mask and with the soft brush blend in the edges uh, remember that I have an opacity of 50% on the brush that helps you build up the effect but on the inside here I touched too much so I'll decrease the brush size and paint back with white to intensify the effect because I took away too much with the brush and when you zoom at 100% you can see it looks a lot better uh, maybe the tier 1 should be a bit higher up not too much something like that and I'll have to fix oops the layer mask here uh, okay let's delete that if you want you can also put some uh, dripping blood right here over her body but uh, I didn't want to make it too too bloody uh, even though I think it would look a bit more realistic if you uh, actually let me try that and I will use this one uh, as I said it's not the original um, image and also this one uh, could be useful but I'll use this for the ground there so uh, here you can see another uh, image of drips uh, well actually I can see this one would work uh, let me 
open this and see how I can use this on her arm. Maybe it looks a bit better. This part is right here. Look nice. I forgot about this stock image that I had it. Uh, let's try copying this part here. And since the background of this is completely white, it will be a lot easier to use the multiply blend mode. Um, let's local. Uh, let's try select this and disable it. And like make this smaller. 30%. And even smaller like that and change this to multiply uh, it looks nice and uh, see those edges there see it's not completely transparent you can fix that as I was doing with the other ones using the levels and increase this uh, highlights move the highlight slider to the left a bit and that's it and as you can see looks nice but the color is not matching so I want to use the hue saturation to desaturate this a bit and make it look a bit darker um, I don't know if it looks better on her arm maybe flipping it horizontally Oops. I don't know um, I will leave it on her arm uh, right here on the more of a bottom part I don't know. Um, you can leave it there. Maybe leave both of them, and something like that. Maybe I want to make it a bit darker. Oops. Uh, let's not touch the lightness. <laughs> okay. So I'll leave it like that. You can try to do a bit of a better job than I did here, but I, maybe I gave you some ideas. Okay. Let's uh, move on. As I said, on the wings let's open that image that i was talking about which is this one and again we have white background which is good so let's copy this well it's too big let's it's 2000 pixel actually let's leave how it is and we'll deal with the size a bit later and we will name this group uh, body blood okay this is the blood that we added here on the eyes and on her body and now I want to lock. I want to find the wing layers. So we have the wing, the left wing, which is this one. I will paste that blood image over the left wing. You can see it's huge, as I said. But I will clip it to the left wing now. And now I will make it smaller. Um, pressing Control Command T, lock the aspect ratio, and maybe about 20% of the original size will be okay. And now you can see because I clipped it to the left wing, it's only that blood is only visible over the over the surface of the wing. And now I want to get rid of the white and only have the blood, so I will change the blend mode of this to multiply. And you can see how it looks now. And I just want some blood there. I don't add too much because it will not look realistic. So some blood over there. And now you can duplicate this uh, wing blood. You can duplicate it and put it on top of the bone. Uh, I did that by pressing the Alt key, clicking here and drag it down and it will duplicate it. And now I'll clip it to the bone. And just add some blood like that to make it look, make it look a bit better, in my opinion. Okay, so now we have the blood there. We need some blood on the ground as well. So let's open again our stock image. And in this case, I will use this one control command a control command c control command w to close that okay now um for this uh, we can add it maybe let's see where we can add this let's re-enable that gradient map uh, we can add it um right here below the dragon and below the well actually let's put it above the mist layer and paste it there you can see it's huge so let's Maybe 50% will work. Uh, it's, too, it's still too. It's still too much. Uh, I hope these images are not too violent. Uh, I think this is actually paint, uh, painting. So I don't know if it's real blood. I don't even want to know it. So <laughs> I hope it's paint. Uh, I'll leave it like that. And um, actually, even smaller. And now we need to match a bit the perspective here. So uh, what you can do is use the distort tool. Uh, so I'll choose distort and use these controls here to make it look a bit better um, to make it look like this blood is actually on the ground here and 
now I'll choose perspective and see how I can change this. If you press and hold the shift key, uh, well actually you, you, you don't have to press the, the control key, you can uh, modify these points here, see that? Um, I'll probably leave it like that. I want to have this line parallel to this uh, line here. Of, these are some car tracks or something. And that matches a bit better. Uh, helps you to match the perspective a bit better. Uh, it's still too much blood here. Um, with, so much, with so much blood here, this, uh, this poor angel uh, bleeded out, I think. Um, let's set the blend mode to multiply because we need to hide... The white, the white background, and we need to get rid of those edges. So I'll increase the, I'll increase, I'll use this um, highlights um, slider. I'll name this layer ground blood. Create a layer mask. You can also use this um, stock image that I use here for the wing. Uh, if you want to add uh, blood for the ground, I'll shift this horizontally because I want to hide part of this. Uh, uh, part of this uh, blood there, but uh, it's still too much to I think uh, and you can see that even using the layer and uh, the levels some uh, part of this is still visible So that's why I created the layer mask and now with a soft brush uh, Painting with black I can uh, mask this out and blend it a lot better Okay, so As you can see it looks better if you want to change the tone of the blood, select the layer and press Control command u to load the hue saturation and here you, you can change the tone of it using the, the hue slider and also you can use a saturation, if you desaturate it it will start to look darker and if you increase the saturation it starts to look a bit brighter but do not touch the lightness because this uh, will affect well you can make it brighter if you want but not darker because if you put negative values here you can see that that background that it was white it, it starts to become darker and uh, because we use the multiply blend mode it becomes dark so do not change do not change the lightness if you if you can and this is our blood here um, as i said i think it's too much but uh, anyway um, I'll leave it like, like it is here. This artwork actually is turning out a lot better than I expected when I started working with it. So uh, I think I will add it on my on my website and maybe I'll give you a... Uh, maybe I'll make several resolutions so you can use it as a screensaver. Um, it's also important, uh, as I said many times, how you present your artworks. Um, having um, a portfolio really helps... Uh, really helps you to give a, a better image of yourself to your public, your clients, or uh, even to your followers. And Squarespace really makes it easy for you to to have all of this in a really modern way. And you need no absolutely no uh, knowledge of um, coding, so you don't need to know PHP or HTML stuff like that. And it has tons and tons of uh, features. Um, all of the all of their templates are um, responsive, so you can uh, you can uh, when creating your website, you'll have it ready for an iPhone, iPad, or smartphones. So that's really uh, that's really that's that's really cool. And it's. 100% uh, customizable. You have uh, free. You, you have at, at your disposal all the free uh, Google fonts. Everything is uh, drag and drop. Uh, it's optimized for uh, search engines. You have lightbox uh, presentations. You have integrated uh, music uh, players. Uh, you can connect it to all your um, favorite um, social networks. Uh, you, you have also. Um, you also have Dropbox uh, file synchronization, so if, you, uh, if you're a photographer or if, if you're a digital artist like me, you can upload all your photos to your Dropbox and you'll have them synchronized on your backend uh, on Squarespace, so when you, up, when you create a post or something, you'll have the files uh, accessible from uh, Squarespace uh, on your um, Dropbox. You also have Facebook page integration. You can easily create newsletters, um, you have an integrated visual style editor, so you can edit absolutely any aspect uh, of your website. You can sell products. Uh, if you want to set up a, 
a digital store you can uh, you can uh, accept donations you can create co uh, coupons you can even uh, you can even set a store manager so a, a person that can uh, manage your store but without having con uh, access to the rest of the website um, you can export your sales data, uh, data and orders uh, to a CSV format so you can uh, use uh, that data on uh, an accounting um, program you can also import uh, blog content from WordPress um, and also export content that you created with Squarespace you can export that to WordPress uh, you also have a free domain name if you want if you purchase a one-year account and you also have a trial uh, period if you want to try it without any cost no credit card needed so you can tr uh, so you can try it at uh, no cost and a ton of other features which you can find on squarespace.com if you really want to uh, see all of them and as i say you need no coding uh, knowledge everything is just drop and drag and drop and it's really easy to have a really nice looking website okay we uh, we made a big part of this um let's move on and add some shadows shadows will always make things look a lot better and more realistic so we will start with the dragon so let's locate the dragon group right here and uh, I'll make uh, I'll create a new layer below it by pressing and holding the control key and clicking on the new layer icon that will create the layer below the group that I have selected there and I'll name this dragon shadow and I'll select the brush tool reset the colors pressing the D key I want to paint with black the opacity and the flow, I pretty much always start with about 40% uh, on the opacity and the flow to about 40 or 50 as well. Let's leave it on 40 and see how that works. The brush, uh, we need a smaller brush, uh, even smaller than that. The size of the brush, of course, depends on the canvas size that you have. Um, now we have a bit of a problem here as well. Uh, I didn't think about that on the original, but I can see it now which is, now you can see we have this out of focus uh, field here, but the tail of the dragon is in focus. So we will need to do the same thing here with the dragon that we did with the woman. So luckily I already have this as a smart ob as a smart object. So I'll go to filter, blur and choose Gaussian blur. And I think I used about 1.4 or 1.3. I don't know, I'll leave it to 1.3 1. 1. pixels of uh, radius for the blur. Click OK. You can see the smart filter now is here. I also have the gradient map, so I'll do the same. Select the gradient tool, but I want black to white, not black to transparent. And I'll zoom out just a bit, and I'll start the gradient from here because I want the tail to be in focus, but uh, part of uh, from here on it starts to become uh, in focus. So I'll start the gradient here, and I'll end it right here. Uh, I have to reverse it and do it again. And that looks a bit better. Uh, but I need to use the linear one, not the reflected gradient. So do it again. And I think it looks OK. Uh, this part, I, d I don't want to have it out of focus. So I'll use the brush tool to paint this with black on this, um, on this layer mask for the smart filter. OK, uh, maybe leave just part of the blur there. Okay, now we have it a bit better, I think. Uh, let's move on and continue with the shadow that I started to paint there. So, as I said, I have the brush, the opacity, and the color set to black. And the first thing I want to do is the contact shadows. I call this contact shadows. I don't really know how they, how to call it. It's the shadow that touches the ground there. Oh, it's too much opacity and flow. 30 and 30 as well. Uh, let's select the layer and the hardness to about 30% and just uh, make some shadows there and also here even more hardness and you can see I'm painting with the bottom of the of the brush most of the brush is on the inside of the object there in this case this dragon uh, the body of the dragon and paint with the just part of the brush and as I said this is just a uh, shadow that touches the ground um, in this case uh, I will paint it right here only 
and here as well, but not here because uh, you can see the only thing that touches the ground here are the claws here. And what you need to do here uh, with the lower opacity, I think, is some shadow like that. But we will do that when we make the soft shadows because we need to use a real low opacity there. Um, let's move on on this part of the of the body. That looks okay. And in this part of the tail as well. But here we we'll, we need to use a less hardness because uh, this shadow should be out of focus as well. So you need to keep these things in mind when you when you do this because this will uh, help you make a more realistic effect. And see that? It's a really nice shadow right there. And let's do the same right here using the brush tool. Uh, for some reason I cannot do it. I don't know why. Okay. Oh, we have that shadow right there. Um, okay, let's make the soft shadows now. Mm, if you're confident, you can do it on the same layer, but I would create a new layer and name it Dragon Soft Shadows, and then you can merge them if you want to. Um, now, decrease the opacity to about 15 and the flow as well. Let's leave it at 50 and flow to 20. And decrease the hardness to zero. And let's start with the tail here. I will use a brush size of about uh, 45 pixels and I want to make the shadow but in this case uh, the tail is, is lifting up from the ground here so I want to make a straight line and I'll click once here press and hold the shift key and then click here and do it again here so a few passes like that will create this uh, shadow but uh, I want to undo it because I want to use a bigger brush so about 60 let's try that Okay, now it looks a bit more realistic. And you can see that um, the, sh the shadow where right here on the ground, the closer it is to the ground, the, s the stronger the shadow, and then it fades out. And because the higher the object, the less shadow it casts. Let's do the same here. But in this case, I don't want to follow this because this is going there into the distance, so I only want to have some shadow right there, like so. And let's do the same here, but in this case we, we will use a bigger brush and just uh, some a few passes like that. Right here, we will deal with the woman shadow uh, in a moment, but we need to make the shadow of the dragon first. Uh, that looks okay, and some shadows right here. And right here. Okay. Now let's deal with this part that I was talking about. Um, I'll use a smaller brush and just uh, make some, oops, that was too bad. Something like that, maybe a bit of a shadow there, but I don't like how I painted that. Oops, brush. And something like it, like this will, will be okay, I think. And the same here. Um, it takes a bit of practice and a bit of understanding of how this works, uh, but uh, it's not really that complicated. Part of making good manipulations are uh, is uh, you need to um, take a look at your surroundings and see and understand a bit how the light works, and um, that will help you understand how to cast lights and shadows. And I'm not really good at this, but uh, I don't think I'm doing it really bad either, so... Uh, okay, this is the soft, soft shadows. You can see how much uh, it improves uh, the quality of the of the image. And uh, with this blur here, and with the and with the um, shadows, it really gives more depth to the image. Uh, I forgot to paint some shadow right here. Okay. So it really looks a lot better. Let's try the same with the woman. Um, I'll actually create a shadow on the on the same uh, on top of the dragon shadows. But in this case, for the woman, I'll paint it all in one layer. So I'll first increase the flow and opacity just a bit and increase the hardness. 
I don't like that. Something like that. Now decrease back to 15. Increase the size and decrease the hardness. And a few more passes here. This part has to be really dark here, so. Okay. Okay, and I was saying, uh, and as I said uh, a bit earlier, uh, I didn't forget that. Um, I want to add some gradient overlay on the one because I want to add some shadows. You can paint it with the brush if you want to, but I'll use the layer styles. So I'll add, I'll add a gradient overlay, and instead of using black to white, I'll use black to transparent. Click OK. And you can see, I only want the shadows to be here, so I'll decrease the scale and move this down like so, and change the blend mode. You can choose multiply, but actually, it will have it will have no effect uh, unless you use black to. Well, you can use black to white and use multiply, but you'll have the same effect. So you can use black to transparent or black to white, but if you use black to white, use multiply. And of course, I need to do reduce the opacity. Actually, I'll try soft light. But if you use soft light, you need to use black to transparent because otherwise the white part of the gradient will make the top part brighter. So I don't want that. Yeah, that looks nice on soft light. Okay, it makes it a bit darker on the bottom, and the opacity at about forty-five or fifty percent. And with the gradient, you can move it up and down. So um, I have that there. Um, let's see what else uh, we can add here. I added a planet here. Uh, you can do that or not. Uh, I'll show you how I did it. I used this uh, render. Um, this re I, this is not a real planet. So we can copy this. Let's see where we can put it. Uh, below the shadows and actually below the mist layer. Let's see how that looks. Of course, we need to make it a lot smaller. Let's try 50%. Uh, it's too big. Uh, that looks better. I'll rotate it because I want the brighter part to be on top. Like that. Even smaller, I think it will look better. Like that. And I'll create a layer mask. I'll name this layer planet. And I'll use the gradient because I want to mask the bottom part. You can also use brushes, but I don't know why I like to use gradients. Press and hold the shift key and first select the layer mask, of course. And uh, I think I have to reverse this, we'll see. I'll click here and create a gradient like that and that hides part of the planet, but I, I need to start from higher up because I want the planet to be, um, to be transparent when you get here because uh, I wanted to create the fact that it's behind those mountains there, so you need to end the gradient before you touch the top, the tips here of the mountain. Okay, so that's um, the planet there, but it's not looking too realistic. So what you can do is, uh, we, we need to make it um, a bit brighter because uh, it's uh, far away into the distance. So uh, you can use inner glow, you can also use outer glow if you want to create uh, all sorts of effects. Uh, let's try inner glow and increase the size and change the color to white but it's not looking too realistic to me anyways let's leave it like that but then I added some um, some clouds around this to kind of hide a bit the edges so uh, I downloaded this clouds pack this is a PNG pack of uh, clouds I don't really see them too well here I want to use some one some nice cloud that have some good shapes this one I think it looks okay so I'll copy it you can also download brushes or if you have brushes you can use brushes as well so I'll, I'll paint this cloud of course above above the planet put it right there uh, we have a problem here which is the color so um, these are white and the color of the sky is um, 
gray so you can use this uh, to darken uh, to darken them a bit you can use the hue saturation and, and decrease the lightness but not too much because uh, you'll start to see it's not looking nice let's try another one I don't like that one okay um, that one looks a bit better um, if you want to add uh, the same value for the hue saturation you can press alt control or alt command on a Mac and press U and when it opens it opens with the same values that you used last time so uh, that uh, will help you speed up the process a bit and I'll add yet another one and, and that's it and then you can add as many as you want there um, not really realistic I don't really like how that looks I'll delete it I'll just leave this once uh, you can use also levels or maybe instead of using inner glow you can use color overlay and uh, see maybe a tone like that and uh, or maybe a bit darker and change the blend mode to screen and that will make the whole thing a bit a bit brighter okay so I think it looks just a bit better. Not too much, but uh, it's okay. You can also use brushes. Uh, let me try to... If you have a cloud brush, it's, it's a lot better because you can uh, hide part of this planet and show the, the real clouds and show the real clouds be, uh, behind there. But you can also use a soft brush. Uh, let's try that. When re I have this really low opacity and flow. You can hide part of this uh, painting with black, of course. Um, but it's too low so let me let's change this to 30 and 30 and uh, let's see what sort of weird brush I have here not working as I expected 50 and 50 yeah that looks a bit better so I don't know um, not looking too good I'll leave it how it was like that Okay, uh, let's move on. Uh, those clouds still don't look too realistic, but uh, anyways, uh, you can use. I'll, I'll try to use uh, layer styles. Uh, choose color overlay and try this blue tint and decrease the opacity a bit, or try multiply. Not looking nice. Uh, let's copy the effect on the other one. Well. Anyways, uh, let's move on. Now before moving on and making the final adjustments, I wanted to add a bit more, uh, some other details here, like some feathers here on the on the wings and some out of focus objects here. I used these feathers from the positive photos. Um, as I said, I'll give you a small resolution for non-premium users. Let's see if we already have the path, no. Um, some JPEG files already have a path here so when you download them take a look here because maybe you already have the selection made uh, I already have a tutorial explaining how you can actually um, embed you can this selection can be embedded on a JPEG file so uh, what I'm doing now I can save this uh, as a path I can convert this into a path and save the JPEG file and the path will be embedded here and the next time you open this image uh, the path is there and the only thing you need to do is press control and click on that path and you'll get the selection. Um, let's refine the edge a bit. Well, actually, I need to f refine the selection from here. I'm pressing the Alt key because I want to exclude this part of the, of the feather there. Like so. Now I'll use the Refine Edge, Shift Edge, increase the smoothness, increase the feather a bit, and now the contrast. Uh, anyways, this will... Uh, I'll make this smaller so yeah, the edges are not really necessary. It's not necessary to have them really precisely cut there because this image is quite big. So uh, I want to make sure that I copied it. I copy merged. Go back to my document layers and place this above everything here. And you can see it's really big. So I want to make it smaller. Uh, obviously, it's not matching the feathers on the wing, so we need to desaturate that. Um, reset and reduce saturation to zero, to minus 100, actually. And let's flip this around. 
put it one there, duplicate it, maybe make it a bit bigger and put it maybe there. And then we can close this and open another one. For example, this one, check the paths, nothing there. Select the feather and also this part. Exclude this area and re-include the other one. Refine edge, shift edge, a bit of feather, a bit of smoothness, a bit more of feather and contrast to sharpen the edges. Uh, layer mask, click OK and that's it. Apply the layer mask, edit copy and paste it here. And you can see this one is really big as well. So we will make it smaller to about 4% of the original size. And even smaller. But I don't like that position there. Okay, you can also um, add a few ones on the floor, some of these feathers uh, on the floor and make some shadows there. Uh, let me show you how to do that. Um, this one, uh, actually let's see if I can use drop shadow. Yeah, it looks nice. But the distance I'll decrease it to five and the size to four to make it a bit sharper, that shadow. See that? It looks nice. And I wanna duplicate this one as well. Flip it, make it smaller. And don't add too many feathers here because it will not look maybe too nice. So just a few ones to make it look like, well, she's losing feathers. And then I'll repaste that feather that I pasted last time and uh, make it just a bit smaller. Put it right here and add some blur to it, actually a bit higher up. I wanna flip it like, well actually I'll leave it like that. Put it there and add some Gaussian blur. Blur, Gaussian blur. Let's see how many pixels we can use. Four or five pixels, 4.5. For this one I added 4.6. And close it, don't save. And open the last one, this yellow feather here. Uh, this one maybe will be a bit more difficult to extract, we'll see. Well, actually, it's a lot easier to select the background because it's all white. Quick selection. Uh, as you can see, I'm not spending time making any precise selections here. I could, but I don't want to do that because I don't think it's worth doing it. Um, these feathers will be, uh, at least this one in particular, will be out of focus so the edges are not really important and the other ones I scaled them down quite a lot to about 5% of, the, of their original size so that's why I didn't bother um, oops uh, that's why I didn't bother uh, making great selections uh, that's another good reason why I like to work with high resolution images you can you have a lot more room to uh, make bad selections. I know this is not a good advice, but uh, uh, that's why I do sometimes. That's what I do sometimes. So, uh, well, anyways, um, I'm not saying that you should be lazy and you should not make good selections because you're working with high resolution images, but sometimes, uh, well, I think sometimes it's not worth doing that. Um, do, do, do. Let's remove that part there and we have our feather ready control C and go back to our document paste it right here oh, I forgot to use the refine edge but as I say it doesn't really matter let's type 40 see how that looks uh, looks good let me take a look at the original and see yeah I added one here and a few ones there but uh, anyways, don't save that. I'll only use these two feathers. Make it smaller. There, Control F to apply the last used filter, which was that Gaussian blur. But I want to 
desaturate this quite a lot to about minus 65 percent and i can duplicate this one and make it smaller and maybe put it right there even smaller and rotate it just a bit flip vertical see this gives a bit more of depth uh, to the whole image i think i don't know where to put that i don't want to cover important parts of the of the artwork so keep in mind that when you're that's too much blur when you put this object around blur gaussian blur just one pixel because this one was already blurred okay and for those objects those um i don't know let's see if i can find them this um spheres here it's easy to do that so you can create a new document about let's see 600 by 600 you need to have the 3d option uh for your for your photoshop but if you don't have them no, no problem uh, make a square document and uh, fill it with this uh, i use this color and then go to 3d and choose a new um let's see what, what that was yep new mesh from layer choose mesh preset and select sphere click ok and that's it uh, you can change the light here um i want to have maybe a, a different angle i don't really know how to change it right, right here okay and uh, that's it i'll leave it like that something really really simple you can choose render but it will take some time let's hope it does a quick job oh i forgot to take away the shadow sorry we need to re-edit this i don't want to edit the texture i want to edit the light and i want to get rid of the shadow i don't know how to do it but we'll find out yeah here it was um, i don't want to cast any shadows and i want to increase a bit the intensity because i want some stronger um so, oops let's leave it on infinite i want a bit of a stronger sh um, glossiness there let's render now this render i hope it's not too small for my document okay um let's i don't know if i did this correctly i'll rasterize the layer yeah and if you don't have if you cannot do this object in photoshop i'll give you the this image if you want to use the same one that i used here i'll go to edit copy go back to my document and paste this on top of everything here well it's not too small and i'll duplicate it first make one a bit smaller and i don't know where i placed the other one let me take a look yeah a bit down there um make it just a bit smaller I'll put it here and I'll move this other feather away right here like so and this one I'll make it smaller and put it right there I want to delete this message okay so um, now I want to blur this uh, just as I did with the feathers but I want to convert this into smart objects and this one as well and now press control command f and increase the blur amount i'm working on the bottom sphere there about 4.7 and do the same for this one for this one i want to blur it a bit more or oh, 8.7 okay uh, maybe this, these are a bit too dark compared to the other ones but uh, on the other document these ones are brighter but uh, you can do that if you double click to open them and uh, maybe use um, let's try using the lightness and down the levels increase the midtones and highlights create a bit more of a contrast let's save this and it should update that okay let's do the same with this one levels increase the midtones and highlights just a bit click ok and save this okay now we have those uh, spheres there some feathers there so now we have a bit more of a 
a bit more depth on the image. Let's go ahead and make the final adjustments. The, the first adjustment that I created is a gradient map. So um, create a new gradient map. And um, I used this default uh, purple to orange color and change the blend mode to screen. This will make the whole image brighter and have this, you, you get this tone. Okay, but decrease the opacity to about 25 or 22. And uh, next, a color balance. And here we will start with the shadows. And I have minus three for the top one. On the middle we have zero and then we have four. For the midtones, we have the following values 22, 18, and 20. And then for the highlights, minus 57, so we have more cyan, minus 20, and minus 14. You cannot try preserve luminosity, but when you use such extreme values, um, like the ones I used here, it uh, doesn't look good. So in this case, deactivate preserve luminosity, okay? I also want to decrease the opacity to about 70 because uh, it makes the image too, too um, cyan, too blue, okay? Then I used a color fill, a solid color adjustment. And I use that uh, exclusion technique that I sometimes use. So uh, select a, a blue tone, uh, like from here, from the color picker, and use a really dark tone like the ones I, ha as you can see here. I have the color value, the exact one if you want it, but it doesn't really matter. So just use a tone like this and click OK. And then change the blend mode to exclusion. And this is what happens, OK? See, it makes the highlights uh, yellow because yellow is the opposite of blue. And uh, it, I don't know how, it makes the image a bit softer in my opinion. Okay, and the next thing that I add is another color balance. And in this case for the shadows we have everything on zero, so leave it as it is. For the midtones we have four minus three and nine. And for the highlights we have minus 15, minus nine, minus 23 okay so you get this uh, this effect before and after a bit more uh, magenta uh, okay on top of all of these adjustments I added another gradient map uh, and I chose this uh, um, red blue and yellow gradient again this is the def default gradient that all Photoshop versions have and I changed the blend mode of this to hard light and then decreased the opacity to 5%. Okay, and you can see we start to get that tone that we have here. Uh, let's not close that because I, I didn't save it and I want to give the I want to give you this uh, sphere in case you, you cannot do this. Okay, so we have the color tone. Now let's go and work with the light. So uh, what I did next is I created a stamp. Uh, so the standard procedure that I use in most of my tutorials, so shift, control, alt and E or shift, uh, command, alt and E. First, make sure you select uh, the top, uh, the top mm, most layer. Okay, so that will, will create the stamp, which will name final. And I'll convert this into smart object. And this is where I use the lighting filter and some other filters. Uh, let's go to filter, render. Render, render, lighting effects. Okay, so uh, what I wanted to create here is a bit of a vignetting on the corners. So I'll decrease the hotspot. Also the size, so it's too big, this light. Um, I wanna zoom in, but I cannot do it. Okay, um, let's see the intensity, how we can change this. I wanna have a bit more light here on the center. So um, that looks nice, a bit more of glossiness to make the highlights stand out a bit. Metallic, we want to leave this on minus 100 because we don't want contrast. And I think the ambient, the ambience, I'll leave it like there. Texture, we leave there um, to 75 and 
everything how it is i think it looks good by the way i'm using a spotlight and click ok and see if we get any different result yeah see that we have more light here and some shadows there maybe too much shadows on the on the edges so i'll reopen this and increase the hot spot maybe increase a bit the metallic so we get a bit more contrast and click ok so this is the light effect that i used and for more details i used i think I, i'm not sure if i used that filter but i used the the topaz detail too even though i have a lot of uh, filters there i don't really use them um, some of them are de on demos uh, this one is uh, full i have the full version um, i want to increase a bit the small details um, and also the mid detail the medium de uh, details as well let's take a look at this at 100% because uh, otherwise it's not looking maybe it's not going to look nice and some larger details for for more effect and now I want to change the tones a bit this is too much okay I want to change a bit the tones here with this uh, sliders over here yep this looks nice I think this will look nice um, okay show you the before and after the lighting effect is really what gives uh, this look not the topaz detail this is just to enhance a bit you can use the unsharp mask or uh, another sharpening filter to do that and as a final final touch I also used some um, dust effects that I, ha I have a pack of dust uh, particles but uh, I um, unplugged the hard drive so what I will do is copy uh, this layers uh, are this ones okay uh, let me change the blend of this to normal um, this one to normal so you can see it see those uh, particles of dust this is actually um, a flower I photographed flower with a flash and uh, this is what I got so uh, I'll move this to this other document here make it smaller and this is the particles that I have you can also use the create a custom brush and uh, make some effects like this but um, I'll give you the link to this particles pack it's free so you can download it so set, change I want to change the blend mode of this now to screen because I want to get rid of the white background of the black background sorry and I can duplicate this and move it around if I want to add a bit more particles and I have other layers here I don't know how I created those but uh, they look nice so let's copy this uh, I think these ones were made with uh, another pack of particles uh, yeah uh, it's from it's from another pack of particles that I use I'll give the link to uh, to it as well and then uh, two more uh, I created a new layer change the blend mode to screen and I created some glows of light here uh, using this really dark tone of uh, of yellow uh, that's too bright even darker really dark like so and one there and one there and this is the effect that we get so uh, this is the final result of this uh, manipulation the tutorial was a bit long but uh, I hope you learned something new and uh, well, uh, if you like them, uh, visit my channel or my website. I have lots of manipulation tutorials. So that's all for now. Um, thank you for watching and see you on my next tutorial.